cold out there. Uh, the first third of my forecast is going to be committed to the cold conditions outside. This is where we started this morning. Uh, let's just call it mid 20s, but there's a difference because uh, while the mid 20s for Grand Junction, what we hit this morning, 26, we should be 28. I still feel like 28 is middle 20s. Same with Montrose, 24 mid 20s, but 26 is our average still mid 20s. You see where I'm going? Nowhere, nowhere fast because we have these cold conditions sticking around. In fact, we're going to go even colder tomorrow morning, so we're subtracting even more degrees Fahrenheit to start your day on Wednesday, middle of the week. Uh, partly cloudy skies tonight, quiet conditions tonight. Temperatures right now <laughs> pretty close to the freezing mark for Montrose. Middle 70s, wouldn't you agree for Grand Junction and Delta? Remember, this is only comedy minute for the first third of the forecast. Temperatures, wind chill factor, wind speeds greater than five miles per hour, Delta Grand Junction, that constitutes colder temperatures. So it feels actually upper 20s instead of those mid 30s where we are right now in Grand Junction. We don't have a whole lot of uh, top wind gusts locally, uh, but as expected between the five and 50 mile per hour breeze category, top wind gusts not to exceed 25 miles per hour. We have one exiting system. We have another incoming system uh, cold front for Thursday, but that's not even going to generate a whole lot of wind. But I will say this, we have just enough of breeze to keep us in that wind chill. So whatever cold factor you're feeling outside, uh, which is uh, akin to what mid January, late January conditions, uh, that's middle of the winter and here we are just mid November. Uh, top temperatures of the day. While it's not official, we knew we weren't going to hit 40 at Montrose. We knew we were going to have a struggle for Grand Junction getting to 40 degrees Yeah, tomorrow. Not much better, not much better. I mean, subtle differences, a degree or two plus or minus, but not much better. We still maintain dry conditions in the lower elevations. We still keep these cold conditions. We don't have any hazardous weather associated with the temperatures, uh, but again, don't leave your pets outside and you need to be paying attention to your pipes, your plumbing. You don't want any issues with frozen pipes and certainly you need to know what to do if you have a frozen pipe. You don't just stick a, a hair dryer to thaw that out immediately. That would cause even more damage, but also folks, it's driving. There's another issue you need to be concerned with. Uh, while we do have dry conditions, while yeah, we did wake up this morning with some snow in the mountain zones. In fact, I want to revisit that because even though we don't have storms, you still need to be very careful driving. Case in point last night, we headed into the evening with dry conditions right around the 10 o'clock hour. Uh, as we signed off last night, we talked about a little bit of snow developing around the Meeker area. Well, look what happened. This started to progress its way further towards our mountain zones, our mesas, our plateaus created a nice round of snow about four inches worth up on the Grand Mesa, four to six. Powderhorn's not reporting anything official, but I saw fresh snow for them. That even put some snow in the Breckeridge and the Vail area. So yeah, this was part of that exiting system from yesterday. Now we look towards another incoming storm system for tomorrow morning, but tomorrow morning it's just the leading edge of our big story on Thursday, which is a cold front. So if you're looking for snow tomorrow morning, on the leading edge of our major feature for the week, which is not going to be all that impactful for the western slope outside of, you guessed it, colder temperatures. Yeah, we're going to go colder for the end of the week. So the leading edge of this incoming cold front tomorrow morning, Wednesday, just puts down some light snow, probably around Winter Park, probably into Steamboat Springs. If you get the idea of the area, that's what is going to develop. But with this cold front swinging through late week, Thursday into Friday morning, we see a lot more coverage of snow, especially on the front range, I-25 corridor. But again, you're traveling along the I-70 stretch, even Highway 40, you're going to encounter winter weather. You need to be careful. You need to be prepared. You, your vehicle, and then on top of that, right now we have the move over law. It's been in the books for quite a while. So if you see emergency personnel on the side of the road, you need to move over. If you can't because traffic has you blocked in, slow way down. So that leading edge tomorrow, cold front just getting into the northern tier states. By Thursday night, Friday morning, it already passes through the state of Colorado. So we will see an expanded coverage in the snow, primarily along the divide, folks, primarily along the divide. But that has impacts for all of us, whether it's uh, goods being transported to the western slope or us just trying to get through the area. So slow it down, be careful, winter mode this weekend, certainly uh, for the end of the work week. But for the weekend, we have clear skies. We're just left with colder temperatures. Grand Junction, we're supposed to be in the mid 50s this time of the year. You don't see that on this forecast page, but what you do see are dry conditions. So we're getting hit with a couple glancing storms. Uh, the more significant feature is that cold front coming through on Thursday, primarily east of the divide. I think we'll be dry, but a few of our mountain zones will pick up some fresh snow, picking up fresh snow. Folks, that's the order of business, whether it's natural or artificial. It all adds up to a bonus. Now, Powderhorn has a grand opening next week, but 
even higher in elevation? Well, Michael Lagerwell, a reporter, has a story on a different kind of grand opening in the snow. I am beyond excited. We are thrilled to have these kind of conditions this early in the season. Opening day of the Nordic ski season on the Grand Mesa is here. We uh, wait for this all year. Despite the cold and harsh wind, nearly 50 skiers showed up at Skyway Trail to break in the new season on a freshly groomed trail. Our permit with the Forest Service starts November 15th, goes through April 15th, so this is our first official day of being open. And thanks to Mother Nature, this is one of the best opening days the Nordic Council has seen in about 30 years. We are opening today with more trails open than we've ever had probably in our history. Those trails are in pristine condition thanks to some off-season work. We went in with some heavy equipment and took out stumps, big rocks, um, obstacles that were making it difficult for us to, to groom. Now in season, grooming and maintaining the snow is the top priority because there's no fake snow up here. There, there's a lot that goes into Snow management and uh, snow science and weather and, and all kinds of things that we deal with. It sounds like that extra work paid off. The skiing was great. This is, from what I told, is one of the best Nordic ski places, not only in Colorado, but in the country. With all the fresh powder on the mountain, there's no better time to hit the trail for some skiing or snowshoeing or even taking your dog for a walk. First on the western slope on the Grand Mesa, Michael Lagerwell reporting. Yeah, if you're looking to get into skiing this winter, the Grand Mesa Nordic Council is offering free ski lessons along with a variety of other fun events this ski season. Head down to westernslopenow.com for more information. By the way, when you go dress warm, we'll have more news after the break. But first, here's that ski report.